Embedded Clauses and Prepositional Phrases You studied embedded clauses extensively in Unit 3, but this presentation will give you a quick revision along with prepositional phrases. Before you can look at embedded clauses, it's worth remembering what a clause is. A clause is a grammatical unit that refers to a happening or an event. It contains a verb. A simple sentence is an example of a clause as well. In descriptive writing, some clauses can add extra information to the head noun in a noun group. So then, what makes an embedded clause? Embedded clauses in descriptive writing add extra information to the head noun. Embedded clauses are a type of qualifier. Qualifiers provide descriptive, specific information about the noun, such as what kind or which one. Do you remember this table for breaking down a noun group? So, how can I identify an embedded clause? You can spot the embedded clause using a few simple rules. Firstly, an embedded clause has a verb, often begins with a relative pronoun, for example, who, whose, that, which, whom, still makes sense if the relative pronoun is deleted from the clause, is a dependent clause because it cannot stand alone. One thing I know after all these years is that practice makes perfect. Let's look at an example together before you try your own. Let's take Grandma Gladys's advice and look at some examples. This first example is from the picture book, Memorial. He says he stood at the crossroads and watched the ceremony. He was with the other town boys who had joined up, or what was left of them. The embedded clause here is who had joined up. So how do we know? Well, let's test it against the rules of an embedded clause. We know that this is an embedded clause because a verb is included and it begins with a relative pronoun, who, whose, that or which. Who had joined up is a dependent clause because it cannot stand alone. It tells us more about the noun, boys. What about this example? My great-grandpa says they planted the tree on the day he came home from the war. The embedded clause is he came home from the war. Notice here that you can remove the relative pronoun, that, and it would still make sense. My great-grandpa says they planted the tree on the day he came home from the war. Authors sometimes omit words that are not essential to making meaning. This omission helps keep the text fluent and precise. Remember, in our embedded clause rules, the relative pronoun can be omitted and the sentence will still make sense. What's the purpose of an embedded clause? Without the specifics about the character in the story, these sentences would be too general and non-specific. Look at examples without the embedded clauses. He was with the other town boys. My great-grandpa says they planted the tree on the day. These sentences do not provide the specific detail compared with the sentences with the embedded clause. Without the embedded clause, the reader can be left to wonder about the details. Before we take a look at prepositional phrases, let's review prepositions. A preposition is normally placed before a noun and shows the relationship between a noun or pronoun and another word or words. It is a form of cohesive tie, in other words, a way to tie the text together. Here are some common prepositions. By, in, from, to, of, with, on, between, among, about, after, against, along, around, before, behind, below, beside, until, since, within, during, into. Now, a prepositional phrase describes where or when something happened and can effectively act as an adjective or an adverb. For example, in the race, among friends, or in common with. And the great thing about prepositional phrases 
is that we use them all the time, sometimes without even knowing it. Let's take a look at this simple sentence, the boy ran. But where did the boy run? The reader needs to know the where and the when of the situation because there's simply not enough information here. This is where a prepositional phrase can come in handy because it can provide further description. How about the boy ran in the race? This sentence is much better because it tells us where the boy ran. He ran in a race, but it still doesn't tell us when he ran in the race. We will need to add some more description. So, the boy ran in the race after school. This is much better because now we know when the boy ran. This gives the reader more information about the situation and helps to describe what the boy is doing. Let's have another look at the sentence. The boy ran in the race after school. We know it contains the prepositional phrases in the race and after school. Now let's add an embedded clause. We know that an embedded clause provides specific details. In this case, the details should be about the boy in the race. Therefore, the embedded clause is who is a very keen athlete. We know more about the boy now. The boy who is a very keen athlete ran in the race after school. Okay, it's time to return to your lesson and practice what you have revised. Good luck!